how to use a rope come along. Take our half inch rope, loop it through. Your pulling end goes through this, and your tail comes through the bottom. And of course, we added a shiv to basically get the operator away from the top of the tree because the tree is relatively tall and it's going to land. It's going to land within 10 feet. So if something ever happens, it gets the operator away, and this tree's got a lot of lean to it. Today is pretty windy and we were gonna just hook the rope into it and pull it over with all the tops on it and everything, but better safe than sorry. There's a power line, there's a house, there's, I don't know, a $30,000 Corvette over there. Um, it's not worth the risk and the amount of time it takes to take the top off and whatnot is less time than it takes to fix any of those things. So we're gonna show you what we kinda do. I'm gonna show you the situation, show you how it's leaning and where I'm gonna be aiming basically. We can hit this guy. And I want to put him, I want the tree to basically land right about there. See how close we get? Well, if you get a good look at your tree, it's got a, it's got a kind of an awkward lean. It's leaning towards another patch of trees over here. So it's kind of on an angle from where we want to be. So we're going to have to change where we aim because the sights and the saw aren't going to be necessarily where the, where the tree is going to land, we're going to end up having to kind of lead the tree one way or the other way, so that way it hits where we want to hit. Because if it had all, if it had all that extra weight on it and it starts to go, I have to bring it uh, another an extra 30 degrees farther than where I need to bring it. So it's got that much more movement, so it could break a hinge and end up be, if one hinge, one side of the hinge is a little bit bigger than the other side, then it could end up breaking that and the whole thing twisting, falling, hitting the power line, or hitting hitting their house. So. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to make a pretty good size open at least 90 degrees if not more face cut and what I'm going to do also is bore into the tree and do a plunge cut get it so that I have about probably an inch hinge max because I don't have any weight up top. It's basically just going to be the rope come along pulling getting him to go over and me uh, aiding it with some wedges just to be just in case if something happens to the rope. We'll see what happens. What you end up doing is I gotta make at least a 90 degree opening here because the tree has to fall at least 90 degrees if not more. I want it to kind of break off while the tree is still in the air so that way it will fall mostly level instead of the, our prongs up top hitting the, hitting the <laughs> ground. And when you're doing a when you're doing hinge, some rule of thumbs of how big to make the hinge or how far, we want to be at least on this half of the center of gravity to help. If something happens, then it can rest back on to my back cut. And if it's 80%, that means I got relatively a, a good amount of wood to for holding capacity. And the thickness of your the thickness of your hinge should be around probably an inch or about 10% of the 10% of the diameter of the whole entire tree. This guy's about <laughs> a 16, so it's about it's about 1.6 inches. But he doesn't have anything on top, so I can make it a little smaller just because I'm gonna to have to overcome and break that one inch board that I leave in there. <laughs> we do all our final aiming. Make sure that the tree is in line where I wanna go. And he's just on the pulley side of that little thing. Hopefully I'll make it so it hits that. <laughs> and we're gonna have Ryan tighten up the pulley. Go ahead, Ryan. When I'm going to be boring into this uh, into this tree, I can either decide to do it so that uh, I'm on my attack side of my bar is on the hinge side or it's on the back the back cut side. And on this one, I'm going to be on the so that way the saw is going to be kind of forcing me to my back strap. So that way, if I had it on this side of the tree, what would end up happening is the saw would try and force me to go into my hinge, and then I could end up cutting my hinge. Especially seeing how I'm on the side of the tree where I want to end over here. So what I'm going to do is 
there's way more, way more room here and I'm gonna, and the sun and the light for filming is better on this side. So I'm gonna come in right through here, bore right into the tree, go through the whole entire tree, come up to get the desired hinge thickness I want and then set up my back cut. Two and a half inch by about an inch back strap right here holding this is my wood that's holding the whole entire tree up so I can get my wedges in there and whatnot tighten up my my pole line and then push them over and in this situation don't worry about cutting your hinge off you can take your saw go above or below I'm gonna go in this situation I'm gonna go below so that way the thing doesn't grab my saw and bring it up and over with it if you go above it, what would end up happening is you could have a little bit of wood in here too and the whole thing could take it away. But if I go on the bottom side here, it break, it's going to break away from the stump and then leave my saw in the stump if something were to happen. Okay, tighten it up. Well, you can automatically see what ended up happening. This is a way to tell how, how big your hinge was re with relationship to how big it should have been. When you start to have fiber pull like this, that means that you have too much wood on your hinge. So I, the, see, you always have something in the center, especially if, you, if your bar is pretty close to the same diameter of your, of your tree that you're trying to cut. A lot of times you'll have a little bit left inside. So what you're gonna wanna end up doing is this is where you get to practice a little bit and you get to you get to see exactly what works, what doesn't work. And you can see we're right on cue. I think our little thing went flying somewhere. Yep, so we hit it. So no problem. That was easy. Um, basically, I, I, I accounted for about three feet extra this way for lean. So that way the tree would hit exactly what I wanted to do because we had a little bit of lean that I had to, I had to account for. And basically the back strap worked perfect. I had two inch by about an inch right here. And it was a little corner, so I had to really dive right in there and get it to what we had to do. But that's it, simple and easy. And always never leave spikes like this. I don't know how many people, if you're ever hunting in the woods or you're doing things, hiking or whatnot, and you go to sit down on a stump because you're tired, these things will poke you and they could actually kill you. So go through, cut all your, cut all your little stickers. But top branch, we're moving in and grooving.